Today I have two kettles in front of me. I have the Maestro House kettle and I have the F Fellow Stag EKG kettle. And we're gonna be going head to head on which one I think is better. In disclosure, this one was sent to me free of charge by Mastery House, if that's the way that you pronounce it. But I did win the Fellow one in a contest. So neither one of these I paid for. So this is completely unbiased opinion on whether or not I think one is better than the other. So we have the Maestro House, Maestro House, I'm gonna pronounce that wrong the entire video, at $130, and then we have the Fellow Stag EKG. This is the original Stag EKG, not the EKG Pro or EKG G Pro Studio. This one is 165. If you want the wooden handle upgrades, it would be around 195. So that would be with the black handles. We're at $35 more than the Maestro House one. Um, so I wanna go over a couple of different things, but I asked before I do that, if you'd please like and subscribe, that helps me produce more content like this. Follow me on Instagram for more content, Convenience Coffee Corner, and that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So I wanna read a few of the comparisons of these kettles just of statistic wise and stats between the two. So we have 139 over here at the Maestro House, Maestro House one, and we have 195 for the Wooden Accent Fellow or 165 without it. The capacity of uh, this one is one is 0 .95, 0 0.95 liters versus 0.9, not much of a difference on there. Um, they're both kind of made similarly in a lot of ways. It seems like there might be just a tad more plastic on this one, but not much. Um, of a difference. We have the same uh, wattage on here at 1200 watts each, and we have LCD displays. This one has a holding temperature, which means if you set the kettle to a temperature, it will hold it there for 60 minutes. This one, you can adjust that range from 10 minutes to 24 hours, depending on your liking. Um, this one has a beep that you can mute. The fellow one does not. Uh, the Ministry House one has a child lock. Um, if you are looking for some extra safety, uh, there is temperature switching, so you can switch from Celsius to Fahrenheit between the two kettles. Um, the range is a little bit higher here. You can set it down to 86 versus the 104 on the fellow one. And that's about what it is. That's the difference between the two. Um, so overall, this is a pretty easy, quick comparison. Um, there's a couple things I wanna hit. When pouring into an eight ounce glass, uh, I, I like to think of kettles in a couple different ways. Uh, how fast does it heat up, if that's important to you? Does it have a hold feature? The adjustable hold feature personally doesn't make it too big of a difference to me, um, but having a hold feature is huge um, because then it allows you to set the temperature you want and come back to it whenever it's ready. And uh, how quickly does it pour out? So how fast can you pour out of the kettle? And um, how much control do you have out of the kettle? The reason for fast is because right now in my current setup, I typically brew espresso and I modified my espresso machine so I don't have a hot water tap out of my espresso machine. So if you were making an Americano or something along the lines of that, you would need to add hot water uh, underneath of your shot of espresso and that would give you an Americano. So if you wanna make that drink and you don't have a hot water tap on your espresso machine, you will need a kettle of some kind and you will need zero control on that kettle, which means pour rate and pour speed would be preferred over pour control. Obviously, if you have a gooseneck, it's always gonna be slower than a non-gooseneck kettle. Um, also, if you're filling up a flare um, pour to filter, or flare brew head, um, you have to preheat water and preheat that, and the pour rate is more important than the full pour control. If you're using it for specifically pour over reasons, you are gonna want more control rather than a faster rate. Um, and that's kind of where I draw the line on things. So if you are looking for the best pour over kettle, I would put that to the fellow. I think you get a little bit more control. The handle is simply better to hold than this because you have this little gap here between your thumb, which is that. This one does not, so I feel like it gives me a little bit more control and more comfort when holding from the kettle. But if you're looking for speed, it is quite a bit different. Um, when pouring into a eight ounce glass, I found that I could pour faster by three seconds with a Mystery House one versus the Fellow one, which makes it a little bit better for that realm of things. Um, so if you're looking at doing some pour overs, but you're also filling up a flare a lot, or you're making Americanos a lot, and control's not as important, then this might be the way to go because this will give you more control over, it'll give you good enough control to make a pour over. I have nothing lacking in that. I'm not a professional pour over maker. I very rarely make them in that realm of things, but it'll also let you pour faster for the 
Americanos or the flares or things like that. So that is a huge point. Um, one of the things I don't like is I feel like I have to press double buttons on here. So I have to turn that to turn it on and then I have to click this other button to turn it um, on the heating function where it will hold it for a certain amount of time. And then when you switch these buttons, there's a nice little light that goes underneath of it. But when you click on the warm button, you then adjust the temperature through one knob um, and it switches which way you uh, control the temperature. So if you're not on hold, you control it with the on and off switch right here. If you are on hold, then you do it on the keep warm switch here. Uh, and I just find the fellow one way cleaner and way simpler on there. Um, it's just more minimalist, minimalistic, in my opinion, and it's quite a bit smaller for on your countertop. Well, not actually too bad. Uh, it is smaller on the width wise, on the length wise, but on the width wise, it is a little bit wider. So this is wider than um, the fellow ones, the widest one, but it's also the shortest one. So I feel like they might actually be pretty comparable on the amount of space that they take up. But overall, it really kind of depends on where you're going to. I've said this before in prior videos that I don't think necessarily fellow, fellow is the way to go anymore with a kettle. Um, there's a lot of other options and I think this one is a pretty valid option. Um, I personally don't like the look of it a ton, but that's subjective. I do like the speed of the pour better. And overall, it's a pretty nice, fairly easy to use kettle. It has some little quirks here with that and I wish it was just one button and you could adjust all the buttons here. Um, and I don't find the child lock that important. I find that it's kind of odd that there's a switch on the back for the noise and things like that, but it is a welcomed feature. Um, versus this one has a hold switch on the back and the Fahrenheit and Celsius. It just seems more streamlined and it, it looks nicer in the way that I have my coffee bar set up. Um, so I would choose the fellow, but I don't necessarily think, I would choose the fellow for aesthetic purposes, not necessarily overall around. Um, I don't necessarily think that at $165, the, the, I don't think it's, it's not really worth $35 in quality differences. I think that when it comes to having a kettle at home, it is important for me to have one that pours water a little quicker, and that's why I would give it to um, the Mistro house on that. But aesthetic-wise, it's gonna be hard to beat the fellow. You can change out the wooden handles if you want. Um, you can change out uh, the colors if you want, uh, but it comes with the expense of cost, and as a result of that, it makes it kind of, kind of a tough thing. It just kind of depends on what your budget is. So aesthetic-wise, I would choose fellow, but um, in ease of use wise, I would choose fellow, but when it comes to the flow rate portion of things and the way that I would use a kettle, it's almost like the Mistro House one is a little bit better on that realms of things. If you have any questions on these, please let me know in the description below. I'd love to answer those. Um, one thing I also don't like on it is, this is gonna be a super nitpicky thing. Um, with a flare, what I would typically do if I had the plastic lid is I would set up the port brew head on top of the kettle which would then allow the steam to come out through the kettle holes and heat up the brew head um, while it's sitting on the top of the lid. I find you can't really do that with this because of the way that this little handle of lifting this up is. It's kind of pointing at the angle so it doesn't fit on the flare very well. If it was, if it was rotated just one little bit, it would be easier to do that, but I think it might burn your hand. This is super nitpicky because that's not what people look for in a kettle. Um, the lid does come off way better on the Mistro House one. Um, it still has some tension there, but not too much. But yeah, Mistro House is close, but I think it could have done a little bit better job to be more in the kettle competition. I would consider spending the $35 less in comparison to the Flare, or in comparison to the Fellow, but in comparison to a lot of the other kettles out there, I'm not sure if I would, there's a lot of other ones. I mentioned the Kitchen Boss before that I reviewed, which I think might be my go-to recommendation of a kettle until um, I try out a different one, which I'm not really in the market for. So unless another company sends me a kettle, um, you probably won't be hearing too much on those. Um, hopefully this helps a little bit. If you have any questions, please comment below. And again, like and subscribe. That really helps me produce more content as a YouTuber. Thank you so much for watching.